Hello and welcome back to uh, our series on whether or not Richard III killed the princes in the tower, his own nephews. My name is uh, Gareth Streeter and if you're reading this post now on Royal History Geek's website then you'll be aware that this post is about whether or not Richard III, ki um, before he did or didn't kill the princes, whether or not he seized the throne by force or whether he had a legal mandate to declare himself king as Richard III. If you're seeing this on YouTube then this introduces a, a, a blog post that I'm going to encourage you to click on to for a moment. Now I'm aware that whether or not Richard seized the throne illegally doesn't necessarily make him guilty or not guilty of the death of the princes but it is an important question because it helps set the context. I am very firmly of the belief that Richard had no legal mandate whatsoever to take the throne of England. As soon as he became protector and got the princes into his care, he started to circulate not one, not two, but three different reasons why the princes were ineligible for succession. And of course, the main one that's come down to us in history is the claim that his parents' marriage wasn't legal because his father has already been pledged to somebody else and therefore the princes were illegitimate. Well, as you'll see in the blog post, I think the main reason we can probably just dismiss this is the sheer convenience of the timing that it happens to emerge. It just came out of the blue from nowhere just at the time Richard needed it to. But actually, there are other arguments worth exploring. I encourage you to go and have a look at the blog, Royal History Geeks. Dot com. I'll post the exact link in the um, YouTube intro box to this piece. Go and have a look, let me know if you disagree, see where you think I've got it wrong.